Hello, everyone. I'm Tina Gao. I'm a software engineer working on Angular Material at Google. Today, I'd like to introduce the three components we recently built in Angular Material. A little bit more about myself. I like taking photos of the nature, like the skies, stars, and trees. Maybe that's why I built the tree component. <laughs> so what are trees? We see trees every day. For example, the file system in our product, or the files on Google Drive. We can expand the folder and see what's inside it. Maybe there's another folder. So now let me introduce the tree components. It's for visual representing trees of data. We have a version that follows material design specs in Angular Material. If you have your own design specs, you can also use the unstyled version in Angular CDK. Both Material Tree and CDK Tree will be released in our sixth version. So now let me go through the concepts of the tree and then show some demos and show you how to use the tree. Now let's see the concept of the trees. There are two types of trees in Angular Material. One is a flat tree, and the other one is nested tree. In flat tree, the logical parent-child relationship is flattened, and they become siblings in the dome. While in nested tree, we preserve the parent-child relationship. So a node, children are nested inside a stone. So we built this two type of tree because we believe you may have different requirements and different use cases. And you can choose which one Choose the one that fits your need. So both two types have some pros and cons. The flat tree, because we flatten the hierarchy, so an ancestor and all the descendants become siblings in the dome. So it's easier to add virtual scrolling to the flat tree. It can also handle large amount of data because we can reuse some DOM elements. However, it needs a flattener to change the hierarchy. So it needs one more step to set up. For the nested tree, because we preserve the parent-child relationship, it's easier to decorate the nested tree to show this kind of relationship. So it's easier to decorate as a tree, and it's easier to set up because it doesn't need a flattener. However, because the dome structure is nested, it's hard to add virtual scrolling to nested tree. So you may wonder, which one should I use? I suggest use flat tree as a default choice because it can handle large amount of data. And it also has better performance. But if you have a really small data set where you just want to build a demo, you can use the nested tree. Or you have some special decoration you want to do, and it's hard to do it in flat tree, you can use the nested tree. Now let's see some demos. I have four demos. One for flat tree, one for nested tree, one for a tree with checkboxes, and one tree that can dynamic load its children.
here's the data structure for a node in the tree. You can define your own nodes. It can be different from this. This is just an example. Here, each node is a game. It can be a category of game or it can be a game. And optionally, it has a list of children. And here's our data. We have some games. And some games are nested under a category. So here's the flat tree we built based on the data. User can click or tap on the toggle to expand the tree node. We can also make the toggle recursive, so it expands all the children. Or make it non-recursive, so we can expand it level by level. Here's an example of a nested tree. We use the same data structure and data set as the flat tree. Similarly, you can toggle on the tree node to expand it. And we can make it recursive. You can see the dotted line connect the parent and its children. This kind of decoration is hard to do in flat tree, but it's easier to implement in, in nested tree. Next, I'd like to show you a checklist. Here we put checkbox in, in a tree node. So the checkbox is partially selected when some of the children are selected and is selected when all the children are selected. So here we can check the parent checkbox and all the children are selected. We can select a, a child and the parent is partially selected. When we select all the children the parent is automatically checked. The next demo is a dynamic tree. So when user toggle a tree node, we can see a progress bar. And after one second, the children are loaded into the tree. So in this dynamic loading tree, each node have a loading status. And when user toggle the tree node, we fetch the children from the database by an async call. And when the children returns, we fed the tree with the updated data and change the loading status. So I just showed some tricks we can build using the tree component. Let's see how we can build a tree. We need three things. The first is a data source, which provides the tree data. The second is a tree control, which controls the expansion and collapse of tree node. And the last one is a template. That's how we'd like to display a tree. So we can assign the data source to the tree in the template. And there are three data source options. It can be a data array, can be an observable of data array, or it can be a data source with connect and disconnect methods. The connect method returns an observable of data array. If you have used the data table in Angular Material or Angular CDK, you'll be familiar with all this kind of data source. Here in tree, each item in the data array represents a tree node. And it can be nested 
or flattened. But for flat tree, it needs to be flattened before it fits the tree. We also have some pre-built data source, one for flat tree and one for nested tree. But for flat tree, you will need a tree flattener to tell the data source how to build a tree. The tree control handles the expansion on clubs of tree node. It also tracks the status of the node. It can be set to the tree in the template. And we provide a flat, data, flat tree control for flat tree and nested tree control for nested tree. For flat tree, we need to pass in two functions. One, to get the current level of the node. One, to return whether the current node is expandable or not. For nested tree, we need to pass in one function that get children of the current node. Now the return type is an observable of data array, but we will support a data array in the later version. Now let's see the templates. We have tree node, node def, toggle, and padding. To define a tree node, we use mat tree node for flat tree and mat nested tree node for nested tree. In nested tree, we also need a mat tree node outlet. That's the position we put all the children of current node. You can add some decorations around the node outlet. And the node def defines the template of the tree. It also passed the node context. So here we pass in node as context. And later in the template, we can use node.item or node.value. Optionally, you can define multiple templates for the node using a when function. The tree we use the template that the when function returns true. For example, here, the node have two types. One is input, one is select. When the type is input, the first function returns true. So the first template will be used. When the second function returns true, the node type is select, and the second template will be used. There should be also a default template. So when none of the functions return true, the default template will be used. So the toggle is to expand or collapse a tree node. You can put anywhere in the node template, and it's triggered by user's click or tap event. For example, it can be put on the whole node or it can be put on a button inside a node template. You can also make the toggle recursive by mat tree node toggle recursive. And you can add multiple toggles in one node template and make it one recursive, one is not. The padding is for flat tree only because the tree nodes are flattened, and the, all the nodes become siblings in the dome. We need a way to show the hierarchy. So we add padding to the node. It's based on the node level, and the default padding is 40 pixels. Um, you can also change the padding to other values. So for accessibility, the tree have a row tree, and each node can have a row of tree item or group. It's based on whether the node is expandable or not, or whether the node have children. So we have some future plans. We will add keyboard navigation in the later version. 
So user can use keyboard to navigate through the node and expand or collapse the tree nodes. We will also add a tree node toggle component, which is a button. And you can directly put the component in the node template. In CDK, my coworker will work on the virtual scrolling, and we will make sure the virtual scrolling is working with the flat tree. We will also make a simple tree example that accept JSON object. So we can just pass in one JSON object, and the tree will display the structure of this JSON object. So these are things we, we don't have in six version, but we will have in the later version. If you want to know more about the tree, you can go to our GitHub repo and read the docs about the tree. So that's all I'd like to talk about the tree. Thank you.